So we have a whole bunch of Walking Dead news to talk about. If you missed it, uh, on our YouTube channel and on Spotify, we have uh, six bonus episodes talking about the uh, the six most recent installments of The Walking Dead. Uh, those those six bonus episodes from season ten that they tacked on um, before season eleven starts. Uh, we're talking all six of them in a couple of bonus episodes, and that, that was a, a whole lot of fun to do. Um, we're both big Walking Dead fans, um, so The Walking Dead will have a new home in Star via Disney Plus. Um, it's going to Disney know, Plus. It's going to Disney Plus. Now, it's not going to Disney Plus like you're going to see Marvel. Uh, what is it? Like Marvel, Star Wars, or Marvel, Pixar, Star Wars, The Walking Dead. Like, it's not going to be like that. Um, you know, Star is only available uh, at Europe, Canada, and New Zealand. Um and Star is basically going to be the home of more adult content. So it's going to have a lot of the Fox stuff. It'll have the Deadpool films. It'll have Family Guy. It'll have The Walking Dead on there. Um, I don't is know. Star and Star is a different. Yeah, it's different. Oh, okay. This is this is going to be a Disney thing called Star. Um, so okay. like basically when you log into Disney Plus, there will be a Star section. Um, and that will be more of your adult content. Now, I mean, it's not going to have porn on there or something crazy like that. When I say adult, I mean like like something More that a like, ten that a ten year old is not gonna you know what I mean that they're not gonna watch like on their own. Yeah. Uh, because obviously they need they need to put Deadpool somewhere. You know what yeah, I mean? they they're gonna put Deadpool there. Um the X Files is gonna be on there too. The X Files is gonna be on Star because Fox owns the X Files. Disney now owns Fox. Um their merger is what allowed that whole thing to happen. So Mickey Mouse is gonna have his hand in everything as usual because Mickey Mouse is gonna own the world at some point. Um, yeah. and now he owns yeah, rick rhymes and his group of survivors <laughs> um but you know again we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the conglomerate thing and all of these you know bigger companies buying you know big bigger companies buying big companies buying little companies kind of thing where they're just trying to monopolize and conglomerate this whole movie streaming service industry and it's it's God, it gives me a headache. It's it's just crazy. It's gonna be um, an interesting case study. I'm not gonna lie because I it's, know. it's this is gonna like this is this whole streaming service is so new and it's already being uh monopolized like fast. Oh yeah. And it's blowing up too. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's big money deals that these people are making and that these studios and companies are making. Um so again, I don't know if Fear the Walking Dead will be on Star. I don't know if World Beyond will be on Star. Uh, I don't know if the Rick Grimes trilogy of films will be on Star, but we know that the Walking Dead's main series will be there. Uh, now, speaking of the Rick Grimes trilogy, um, I, I wanted to bring this up because we haven't really gotten to talk about this uh, at great length. Um, Gail Ann Hurd, who has been with the show since its premiere in 2010 as a producer, she will carry on and be a producer of uh, the Walking Dead movie trilogy. Um, she's also produced Fear. She's produced World Beyond. I think kind of like Scott M. Gimple uh, and how Frank Darabont was for a while, she will be a part of The Walking Dead, it seems, until until the whole franchise is done with. Yeah, done. Um, until The Walking Dead is dead. Uh, and I mean, dude, her resume is stacked. Have you ever looked up Gail Ann Hurd's uh, what the movie she's produced no dude all of the terminator movies the aliens movies all of the hulk movies like hulk like crappy hulk with eric banna all the way to edward norton's hulk movie um she's produced all of the walking dead stuff she produced armageddon i mean it is a stacked list of movies and series that she has produced it's pretty dope um, and she's always, I mean, I, she really, every interview, every time I've ever seen her speak about The Walking Dead, she seems like she really cares and that she really, um, like she really has a lot of love for this franchise and for this series. 
So I'm happy to see the fact that she's returning uh, to do the films now. I feel like I've seen her in the Talking Dead. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she's, she, she's been she, on it. Yeah, she's on pretty like she she's very outspoken about the show. She talks about the show a whole lot. Um, That's great, honestly. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, now it's been confirmed that the Walking Dead movies will be a theatrical release. It's not going to be on a streaming service. It's not going to be a TV movie. They're going to be in the movie theater. Um, Andrew Lincoln is reprising his role as Rick Grimes. Pollyanna McIntosh is going to continue to be Jadis or Anne. Um, I'm really wondering about where her her character is going to go because she is a strange bird, her character. Um, I forgot who Jada was. Jadis? She's the trash woman leader that ended up not really being a trash woman. Do you remember her? I think so. Hold on. She's the one who found Rick when we thought Rick died on the bridge. Oh, that woman. Yeah, yeah, okay, her. I who said, you. I have a bee or whatever she called him. Um, and, you know, of course, it's been rumored that Denai Guerrera is going to return as Michonne in that movie as well. But I wanted to take some time and I wanted to talk about the first movie in that trilogy. Um you know, a while ago, Robert Kirkman and Scott M. Gimple said that uh, that this film will explain where Rick was taken and what he faces in another corner of the zombie apocalypse. That was their exact quote uh, on what they said about this movie. Where do you want to see this Rick Grimes movie go? And you have to think this is going to be the first in a trilogy. So they're going to have to like leave room for two more acts of this greater story. So... I mean, I guess we can't really even answer this question until we see how The Walking Dead actually ends and where they push the main storyline. But yeah. where do you want to see the Rick movies go? What kind of stuff do you want to see? Fucking world building, honestly. Because it's like, because this is it's a zombie apocalypse, but it's only happened in like the south, in the southeast. You know what I mean? We've only seen, well, really, we've seen it in the south, like Kentucky through Georgia, Virginia, mm-hmm. like you know, like you said, Southeast and really with fear, the walking dead, we saw California, like we saw LA, we saw, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think New Mexico and things like that, but really they're the only two places that we've actually gotten to see in this world, which is kind of wild. And again, I think that's part of what the walking dead has done really, really well. Uh, it is the stuff that they do show. It feels very intimate and it feels very like, wow, I'm watching this small little piece of a greater world and, like, this whole greater apocalypse that's happened. Um, Yeah, like, it makes you think, like, if it's, if, if, like, the southern states is, like, this expansive and this uh, zombie apocalypse, it makes you think, like, what are the other 50 states were like? And that's pretty much what we got with California. Because, obviously, California and uh, the southern states both handled the zombie apocalypse completely different. Right. I mean? Yeah. So it well, it's different geographical it areas too. I mean, LA and you know, outskirts of Atlanta are two different places. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So I, you know, I, w- World Beyond, and I need to rewatch those World Beyond episodes. Um. I I wasn't that into it to be completely honest. I was just watching to kind of get the little bits of information about where we were gonna go and where we were mm-hmm. heading. Um, But they really laced this Civil Republic military thing, this CRM thing. uh, And, you know, best I can understand, it's basically the last like faction of the American government and the military that's like been left behind. Um, I've seen a few people, and I don't know if I even agree with this or not, but I've seen a few people on YouTube and on um, a couple of the Walking Dead Facebook groups and on Facebook and Twitter and things like that. speculating that the whole a b thing you know when rick is laying there and he's all bloody and injured from you know falling off from shooting the um the dynamite and falling off the bridge and saving all of them when she says i have an a and or i have a b i promised you an a i know you know because again the whole question with the helicopter thing and that crm symbol is like what the hell is an a and what does it be like what does that mean um <clears throat> excuse me i've seen some people speculate that an a is a fighter an a is somebody that you can add to your military to to grow your numbers and a b is someone who can be experimented on um 
there was a rumor a while back a few months ago like kind of i think as covid was starting actually <coughs> that the future of the walking dead would kind of take a sci-fi twist and then uh. it would really be <laughs> as you roll your eyes uh. uh and then it would kind of be about like human and zombie experimentation and what this CRM, the Civil Republic military, what's left of the government, trying to find a cure, and somehow Rick could be a part of that, or Rick could be a part of stopping that. Um, you know, in World Beyond, like we've seen that the CRM, like they don't give a shit. Like they they treat people, they have this facade, like they treat like they care about you and they treat people right, but like they really don't. They're basically their only goal is keeping people alive. Like they don't really. They, they don't treat them the way that they should be treated. Uh, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, uh, I know walking dead beyond. So I can't really give much, uh, uh, perspective on like what the show is about, but just off what you're saying, like, Jesus Christ, it sounds like it sounds, it sounds a little bit like Z nation, which you need to check out. I do need to check out Z nation. Yeah, Cause it's, it's, it's way, it starts off as like a zombie podcast, but then it goes way out field. Like, let me tell you, it goes far. I mean, it's all about like the Walking Dead is just about eating, you know, the flesh. But Z Nation is about eating brains. You know what I'm talking about when like zombies yeah. are just like brains. Yeah, it's it's really focused on like the brain, and it's just really spoofy, but it's really good at the same time. I think of Return of the Living Dead when they have, which I know you haven't seen that yet, uh, when they have the the woman zombie on the table. And again, that's spoofy. I mean, it's 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 kind of meant to be like a joke. And, yeah. Uh, they have her on the table, and they're like, "Why do you eat flesh?" And she's like, "Not flesh, brains." <laughs> that's all I it's, think of it's, when you say It's not like that, brains. but like it's it's literally how can I put this right? Like the zombie. I get what you're saying. It's overly sci-fi. Like it's kind of yeah. like I'm talking like human, like zombies that still act like humans. Yeah, I'm not. It's a fan like of that. that. It's like it's like I hope they don't go that far. No, you're gonna you're gonna get zombie human hybrids. In the walking Obvi- dead. If that's the way they're gonna go, if you say they're gonna go sci-fi, one hundred percent. They're gonna go full sci-fi channel. Cause that's where the Z Nation's at. Sci-fi, sci-fi channel. channel. We're and getting into unsolved know, mysteries here, boys. Yeah, <laughs> if you guys know if you guys know about the sci-fi channel, they are known for making some really out of the ordinary movies and or shows. And they're good, but they're really out there. They're really far left field. So if that's the role they're going to go, maybe. I mean, I, I would 100% love to see a Murphy and The Walking Dead, which you guys probably don't know who that is. You know, I, I, I kind of, I don't know. For me, I, I, I think, you know, I liked at the end of season two when Rick reveals what Jenner told him at the CDC where, it's a virus, but they're all already infected. Like that's when, why, when you die, you automatically turn into one. Like that was a cool twist. Like mm-hmm. I, I dug that. Um, but I kind of like the idea that the military is getting frustrated because they're doing all of the experiments. They're trying to figure out like what the virus is, why it does what it does. And they keep failing. Like, I think it would, I would be down to see them doing different experiments on zombies and different experiments on people to try to cure them. Um, or try to like cure zombies or try to like revert them back in some way and they just keep failing and failing and failing i'm okay if the walking dead never reveals Mm -hmm. the cause of the apocalypse or never reveals what the virus actually is um i'm okay with leaving that ambiguous because that's not the point of the walking dead that would be too much of a shift um the the point of the walking dead has always been the people Mm mm-hmm you know, like how how does a group survive in, in a right. legitimate and like the most realistic version of a zombie apocalypse? And I mean, look at even look at that original group from season one of The Walking Dead. Like they're all such different people. I mean, like Rick and Shane are already two different people, even though they were best friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at T-Dog, look at Carol and Ed and that whole situation. I mean, it's just like very different people and seeing how those people become family. Um, and over the course of these 10 seasons. So like, you know, I, I don't know. At the end of the trilogy, if that's going to be the end of The Walking Dead as we know it, um, I would really like to see, obviously, Rick reuniting with Judith and his group. Um, 
we got to see a Rick and Daryl reunion. We have to, yep. or else I'm just not going to be satisfied with my life. Uh, and I, honestly, it'd be cool if they did it as one big, like if the walking dead and the both movies and fear the walking dead and world beyond all built towards one like massive conclusion. And then the last walking dead movie was like a huge crossover event between all of the shows. That would be dope. It would. That would be pretty dope. I'd be, but I would be down for that. I would too. I mean, like, how can I put this right? It's, it'd be such a weird direction if they were to just like neglect the family aspect of The Walking Dead just yeah. to go into a more sci fi ish kind of thing. I and agree. because, like, like, like we said, it's like, it's really family oriented, like Fast and Furious family oriented. And you guys want to talk about it? <laughs> like, it's family oriented. And I'm surprised they're not saying family like every other line. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's if I if I were to want one thing in the Walking Dead movies is to have the original group in that at least or at least mention or cameo with in those movies. It's a trilogy, right? It's a trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would want their I would want some references from the TV show. I don't want it to be just like a single thing where it's like it doesn't really like pull from the actual show. Right. It would be really weird. Do you think they're going to add uh, people from Fear the Walking Dead into the movie? I would hope so, which I don't know. I'm not caught up on Fear the Walking Dead. That's another thing on my to-do list. Um, I loved the first two seasons, and then seasons, like, I, somewhere in season three, I just got lost. Like, I just stopped caring. Mm-hmm. Uh, but And I think it sucked for a little while, but from what I've heard, it is f- straight up fire now. Like, it's really good. So I got to hop back on the Fear train and finish it out. Um Golly, I can't tell you when I stopped <laughs> watching that one. When did I stop? I was... loved the first dude. I've rewatched the first season of Fear, and it's only like six episodes. I've rewatched that like three or four times. I think I stopped season. watching. Where, where, whenever uh, at the, I think Nick's character. You know what I'm mm. talking about? I, again, oh, when he dies. Well, okay, I know. Fuck it. He yeah. just spoiled it. I know he dies. I don't want to spoil it. I haven't made it that far. But that mm-hmm. was something that the Walking Dead themselves actually spoiled for me on Facebook. Because I clicked on Facebook and they were like, Rip Nick! And they had like the picture of him dying and I was like, okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's the other problem I had with Fear the Walking Dead is they killed like all of the main, like every character that I actually liked, they killed him. <laughs> I was like, w- I mean, yeah. it's Okay. <sighs> it was really like, because with the Walking Dead, like it took time for them to be right. killed. It was like, every other season and you kind of got the gist you know that main characters are going to die but at the same time they take the time to build it up fear the walking dead it was like well travis is gone now madison's gone now nick is gone i was just like what like how do you even continue the show from that all you Uh, have now is alicia right and you only you have alicia um and strand they're the only two from the original uh what's his name good the spanish guy um garcia is that his name he's still garcia alive. is still in it thank he, god he's he is, still alive yo yes. so garcia his daughter is may far. still be alive too i'm not no i think I'm she not died positive. she had to there's no way i'm not positive bro let me tell you whenever like yo when uh when i think it's uh if i'm thinking of the right person no i'm thinking of uh who's the guy you were talking about the other like the father of uh what's her name I'm thinking of it right. You know what I'm talking about in the beginning when he was torturing the, the soldier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, what was his se- name? That season was amazing. Yeah, it was. Is he is he still in the in the series? Did he die? The dad? Yeah. That's who I'm talking about. I think he's yeah, he's still alive. He's still in it. Bro, yeah, he is by far my favorite character. Mainly because um he didn't whenever uh, <laughs> he doesn't care. Fuck. He's technically like in the movie, he's uh salvadoran and like Uh that huge twist where like he was talking about like how he was like a rebel or whatnot in the civil war yeah he was talking about like warfare and stuff like yeah yeah crazy stuff yeah but then like whenever he was torching the 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 soldier it turned out he was actually like he wasn't the rebel he was like the government and me and my dad sat there and we're like oh shit that's a whole different (laughs) that that was that was a flip because we're we come from el salvador so we know the story of our yeah. history and when we saw that we were like holy shit that took a turn 
So yeah. that was, I love him, man. He's a great character. Dude, I will say like that. Fi- I mean, I'm serious. I have rewatched that first six episodes of Fear the Walking Dead, probably three or four, maybe even five times. Like they're really good episodes. And like, mm-hmm. again, we've had that conversation before where I'm oddly, weirdly obsessed and interested in like, the beginning of the zombie apocalypse and like how everything would fall apart because that's such a weird wild and crazy scenario Mm -hmm. and and there's so many different places you can take it and like i think that is arguably my favorite like entertain my favorite movie or tv description or adaptation of how that process would go it's just it's fun it's it's good time it's good times but I, I enjoy it. I, I, I love that series. Um, and I do need to finish it out so that I actually understand what's going on because I'm sick of, I'm sick of being in the dark about fear, <laughs> but cause I really am. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea what's going on with it. Well, it looks um, like we're going to catch up. We'll probably, we'll probably do some episodes on it too. Just we, so, you know. we will. We'll, we'll definitely, uh, we'll catch up on the walking dead over the summer and uh, I'll watch Z nation. Um, one more walking dead story to talk about here. You know, if we, no matter how they play this out, it still leaves room for one of the other spinoff shows. We know we're getting a Daryl and Carol spinoff show. Um, We have one more season of World Beyond since that's a limited series. Uh, But Scott M. Gimple has revealed that there will be another spinoff called Tales of the Walking Dead. Now, this is going to be a completely anthological series. Every single episode is going to be a brand new story week to week. It's not going to continue over. It's not going to be recurring characters. Um, Scott Gimple said that this will be an episodic anthology with individual episodes or arcs of episodes focused on new or existing characters, backstories, or standalone experiences. So basically, this is going to be like every single week, it's a new story from within the world of The Walking Dead. I like that. I'm kind of down for it. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty down for it. I'm not going to lie. Look, guys, like I, I've said anthology a lot in the past couple episodes, mainly because I like, I just saw the ballad of Busty Shrugs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Have you? No. Okay. No. It's a Netflix show and it's mainly like it takes place in, in the Western and it's like, it's three stories <clears throat> like it's three well-written stories and none of them connect but they're just stories of of the west during that time and also honestly all th- all of them, all the stories that they had right there were pretty knocking out of the park they're really yeah. good and it's just that idea of like different stories in a certain time period that don't connect and like it's beginning middle end nothing no yeah. sequel no nothing it's just a story it's really interesting to me mainly because it's like it's like it's like it's like whenever you hear us you know how like you know how like when you're growing up and you know your your mother or your father would tell you a story like a bedtime story like there's no sequels it's just beginning middle end that's right. it that's all you get and yeah. i think that's cool i mean that is it's kind of like a bedtime story pretty much and the ballad of bust fuck i'm gonna fuck it up again the ballad of like whatever the fuck it is yeah like <laughs> that's pretty damn good and uh i'm trying to think of any other anthologies that, that i can think i've of. heard people talk about it and say that it's really really great it's really great and if the walking dead were to do that it would honestly sound pretty fire because it's, it's a different because obviously it's a different universe and right. to have different stories where like either they live or they die like there's no question about it that would be yeah. great because, you know, because it's always interesting because, you know, in The Walking Dead, there's always like the main characters stumble upon like, you know, a skeleton and they always wonder like what happened to them. Yeah, stuff like that. Like stuff like that, like where they tell stories of like, oh, I wonder what happened to this mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Like, I like that idea. Like they should definitely make that. And honestly, it would be dope if they had it connect with some of the actual legitimate stories of The Walking Dead series. Mm-hmm. Or like if like... Like, I'm sure there's, like, a moment where, because uh, you, you know how, like, whenever, when Morgan and uh, Aaron were out looking around and they would find these charred bodies, like, let me know some stories about that. Yeah. Like, I would love to know, like, the backstory of that. I think that would be mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. 100% sure. down for that. 
Well, I mean, it's just, it's interesting because, like, even when, you know, you have the scenes of them in Atlanta at first or when they go back to Atlanta later in the series, like, it, every wrecked car, every smashed window in a building, I mean, it's just like, that's a story. Like, that, mm -hmm. there was some event that happened. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I think it's interesting, you know, I've always been drawn and I've always been interested in, you know, there's so many different stories that you can tell in the zombie apocalypse genre. I have the hiccups right now and I hate myself, Jesus, but it's okay. And my allergies are still killing me, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Scott M. Gimple said he, he had this to say, he said, we're working on it right now. Our operating principle right now is single hours that are very different week to week. We've left the door open to tell longer, maybe multi episode stories in the universe. We want to keep it really flexible, but to start out with, we want a bunch of very different stories where the audience isn't going to know what to expect. I'm down for it. Like I really yeah. am as much as I love the main storyline and I love the characters that they've established over the last decade. I am down because, you know, the, the cool thing about this, um, and I'm going to read a quote from Robert Kirkman in just a minute that, you know, kind of fleshes this out a little bit is, you know, you can have an episode that's about day one. That is about the day that it comes on the news that there's a virus and something's wrong and people start turning and society is still functioning. And then the next episode, you can have eight years after the apocalypse happens mm -hmm. and it's somebody down on their luck trying to survive. Like, there's so many different stories you can tell within that world. Um, Robert Kirkman, who was the series creator, uh, he wrote the, the graphic novels. He had this to say about it. He said, this is a tremendous opportunity to explore many different aspects of the Walking Dead universe to be able to jump forward and backward in time and also do things that are much different than what we've done on the Walking Dead thus far. Um, and again, I've always felt like, you know, no zombie story has really done a whole lot of justice very few of them and i think this is why i like the beginning of fear the walking dead so much really does justice to mm -hmm. the beginning of the apocalypse everybody's focused on after like after it's over after people are gone after everything is shut down and there's no electricity and there's no food and yes while that's interesting i think it's been done so much now that i'm kind of like show me something else like show me Show me the world collapsing. Because that's an interesting, that's an, inter again, I don't want to see it. I'm not one of them weird people that like, I like want to see that happen in real partner. life. Yeah. But for entertainment movie purposes. It's, it's an interesting, interesting concept. It really yeah. is. It's a, it, like we talked about in episode 21. It's the perfect what if scenario. Um, and I would 20 out of 10 watch a series uh, that just, talks about different people and different experiences uh and different stories that you can tell within this greater walking dead universe so i'm i'm down for that i'm pretty excited for that actually i'm i kind of wish that was on like right now <laughs> i i 100 would love to see this anthology of tales of the walking dead it's like i don't know why i didn't come i didn't think of it earlier it's like tales of the crypt pretty much yes it's yeah it's just yeah. like that and except you know without the zombie like it's gonna be the twilight zone for the walking dead <laughs> yeah exactly and uh which honestly i need to check out more of the twilight zone <sighs> because I, I i like that also like do you know the one with like because they rebooted it you know what i mean with the uh, jordan yeah, peele yeah uh -huh. yeah i remember when i saw that first commercial i was like yo that sounds dope jordan peele and um uh, in the in the twilight zone like like head running it that sounds yeah. dope as hell, mainly because you know of his work with uh, us and Get Out, which by yeah. the way are two phenomenal movies mm -hmm. for a comedian, a comedic writer to create two spot-on thriller movies. Right, I consider them thrillers, not really horror, but yeah, I one hundred percent want to see Tales of the Walking Dead. That would be dope. Me too. For Showa.